Welcome to the Valley Film Festival Filmmaker Chats at Cinegear Expo. I'm sitting here with Tracy Keshik, our alumni producer from Diamond Days in 2017. So, Tracy, what are you doing here at Cinegear? Um, I'm here to check out the technology. I always find it really fascinating to see what kind of updated, you know, tech they come up with for film. I am far from the expert. I leave that to, you know, my crew. They're, they're the smart ones. But um, in terms of this, I always like to at least have a good, you know, at least a good, you know, view of like, what are we doing? What's new? What what's kind of the thing, landscape look what's like? What's the landscape look like exactly? Like, I even saw a couple of things in there and went, oh, so cool. We could totally use that on film. The stuff that I hadn't even thought of, you know? What, what kind of things were catching your eye? There was a little, uh, I forgot what it's called, forgive me. Um, it was like a little handheld machine where you can create, you know, the illusion of fog or smoke, right? Oh. And a few years ago on a shoot that we had, we were trying to, light up a cigarette indoors and that obviously was not going to work you know so we had to vfx it in, at the uh, back end of it and it it didn't look as good as it could have with something like that you know and i thought oh man if we'd only had that that would be really cool so it's good to know you know so you can kind of go hey i saw that thing at cinegear and i can tap into that so yeah i mean because you know obviously you've got a lot of the cameras that are here that yeah. are coming out uh a lot of the, the a lot of robotics uh oh, it's totally seems. You know, I'm like, what are, year? Are you sure it's 2022? I think we're, <laughs> not 2032 like, or 3022. Uh, exactly. Or, yeah. right? <laughs> um, but then, you know, aside from that, a lot of lights. Yeah. And then, you know, you got, uh, we're hoping to sit down with um, Frame.io and, you know, that cool. kind of helps, you know, with the, the workflow and everything like Absolutely, that. And, yeah. You know, so, yeah, there's just a lot out that, you know, the barrier to entry seems a little lower, you know, equipment wise. Right. And now it's really all about the creativity and, and what you bring to the table as a storyteller. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And the other great thing about this is that you meet so many other filmmakers and people that you might not have met in other situations. So it's a good networking opportunity too, you know? Yeah. So always, always a great time. Here. Okay. And let's be real. Like there's a lot of swag. So I, my, my shoulders hurt that bag over there. I had to put it down. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> Including some swag from here. We yes. got, you know, pens and lip balm Absolutely. and tissues. And <laughs> I was like, take it off. <laughs> I feel jealous. I haven't gotten a chance to oh, go get anything Oh, you have to. Yet. You have to. I will stand in for you, okay? okay? I will hang out here. You have to go get a bag and just fill it up. It's good stuff. <laughs> okay, so for those of uh, those in the audience who haven't seen your film, talk mm -hmm. about Diamond Days a little bit. So Diamond Days is a short. Um, it's a small piece of a much larger concept that my business partner and I are working on. Um, and it's an action film. And we're a female-led production company, but we love action. We love all the fight scenes and the choreography. And it, we love to have fun like that, you know? So we like to step out of the box and try, you know, different things. So um, it's it's giving you the backstory of one character in, in several in this series. So, and we were lucky enough to get it into your festival and lucky enough to win an award, which was wonderful. And um, we got it up on Amazon. So you can watch okay. it there on Amazon Prime. So you said it's part of a, like a multi-piece project? Yeah, it's actually uh, part of a television series. And mm. we did a Diamond Days and then we did another film the following year called Saint. And it features two different characters out of several to kind of give you... The, the backstory of that world, you know, where we're going with that. And the um, the goal for it is a TV series. Okay. If not, we can turn that into a feature easily. So we have and, different options with this, you know. All right. So what are you working on now? Oh, God, a lot. Um, <laughs> Sound <laughs> um, like a me. Lot, a lot of, I know, right? <laughs> we have to have all these irons in the fire, you know, to keep everything moving, especially in, you know, today's economy and the way things are going in film. Do you feel like you've, uh, a sidetrack, do you feel like you've had to start over from scratch almost? In some ways, yes, because things keep changing. Um, and we had a lot of momentum going into the pandemic, but once everything got shut down, it was like, whoa, what's, what's going to happen, you know? So... We started right out, but we, we took a, you know, we took opportunity there because, and we took advantage of the time because it was like, you know what? We need to create. This is the perfect time. No one's working. We're not doing anything. So we created a lot more content. We, you know, focused in and started developing things so that once everything was open and lifted, we can kind of jump out of the gate, you know, and, and get a good With head the start extra on content. The, totally. And... Yeah. Yeah. So, so right now we have a handful of feature films that um, I'm, you know, in the financing process for the, the most fun part, right? 
<laughs> and what um, kind of budget ranges are you looking at? Um, any, and are they that same like action? Oh, type all of? kinds of stuff. We've got oh gosh, we've got dramas and rom coms and you know dance films and action films and horror films. And so we like to. Uh, my business partner's a writer, very creative. Um, and she's written a lot of our scripts. Um, we've also outsourced several scripts. So we're, the goal is to get as much good content as we can, you know, okay. to kind of, you know, it's, you know, every 10 doors you knock on or like, hey, if they don't like that one, maybe they like the other one because it's there in their wheelhouse and not that, you know, so. And is everything that you did shoot, the uh, shorts, I presume, mm -hmm. were they all designed to be like, oh, this is a larger project. This is just a sample of the story. Or was anything just, we just want to tell this story yeah, actually, the new the newest one that we completed um, was also written and directed by my business partner. It's called Dark Night of the Soul. Um, that one is a short, um, and it's been featured in London and in Toronto. So we're that's that's one that we're you know out in the film festivals with right now. So that's the only standalone that you know is just it's it's self contained. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. But the other two, the, the other two were the ones that were you know small pieces of a larger project. And have you found, because um, I know the there's, whenever you're trying to get a big project going, you know, there's always the, well, make a short of it or make a trailer right. of it. But there's always that challenge that if you don't do a good enough job, that it'll actually yeah. work against you. Totally, yeah. So, yeah. like, what kind of challenges have you found, especially in, you know, like when you're working through lockdowns mm -hmm. that you kind of had to overcome? Um, challenges as far as, you know, uh, the financing what, aspect or in uh, terms I, of... Well, I mean, as a little bit. I mean, if that, you know, kind of goes more toward, you know, not having the the proper, you know, equipment. If you're like, oh, man, we, we couldn't afford this thing that really would have made the, the, the project shine or, you know... Yeah. Um, if money's always the hardest, you know, because that's... The, that's an intangible in terms of uh, for an investor. It's like it's like I'm buying insurance. I'm not getting an immediate return. So you know, with some people, they're kind of like, I have to wait a year to see this. I'm going to give you all this money. You know, so it's right. it's a lot of you know maneuvering with that type of stuff with people. Um, but in in terms of you know making content like smaller things like shorts, like we're pretty crafty in terms of how. You know, we budget it in terms of, you know, it's like, okay, think outside of the box. Maybe you don't need $100,000 to make your short, you know, right. you can, you, there's ways, there are ways. And if you get a good group of people coming together that want to make the content, that makes it a lot easier, you know? Yeah. So now the, the investors you're talking to, are they specifically for the features or did you raise any money for the shorts or did you guys self fund for them? Um, I had private investors for the shorts. Um, with the features, yeah, we're, I, I'm kind of making the rounds and trying to talk to different investors and see, you know, where their interest is, what kind of content are they interested in, you know, who wants to invest, things, you know, looking for different options, you know. Yeah. It's kind of where we're at with the features. Without, obviously, sharing any secret sauce, okay. you know, that, that question is always like, well, where do you go oh God. and i know there's like resources out like slated that's yeah. supposed to be able to connect you and and i've got you know a friend who's like oh i was looking on linkedin and i'm like you know that's sometimes so it's hard difficult. to know exactly how to like maneuver it, that and then it is one person's like oh well you go and join a country club and you meet the guy who's an orthodontist i'm like I don't go to country clubs. I know, right? So I'm like, wait, who's gonna pay for my who's gonna pay for that country club entrance fee? You know, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> we're 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 struggling filmmakers here, you know. It's like we don't some people have that option, you know. Right. Um I'm still trying to figure that out, to tell okay. you the truth, because um I think it's it's a landscape where you you do have to maneuver and you do have to try different things. And I usually have gone through connections. Um, because, you know, investors aren't advertising themselves with a sign exactly. like, hey, I've got a million dollars, you know. So you usually you're running into their middlemen or, you know, a friend who knows somebody or somebody that you worked with or, you know, you try to kind of put the puzzle pieces together to get that connection to be able to even speak to them. Right. You know, so it's, it's, it's not technically, I don't know, maybe some people have it easier, you know. I know some people like instantly they get their film financed and it's like, Wow. Yeah, you know? where'd that come from? And some people spend 10 years trying to get one film made, you know, just to get the money, you know, which, and there's some great content out there. It just, you know, it's just, you can't find the, or some people can't find the door in, you know, so. 
And for your features, are you kind of going the route of you're trying to raise it all yourself and then you'll make it and then try and sell it? Or are you trying to raise enough to then go and get like the distributor buy-in? Right. Um, I'm open to both options um, because I've talked to a lot of filmmakers that are doing it one way and then others that are doing it the other. And I haven't found a, you know, only one right way to do this, right. you know, because we are kind of, it's a little bit of the Wild West, you know, out here with filmmaking in terms of there are rules, but there aren't. Yeah. So we're all kind of trying to find our way and find the doors in and, you know. So I guess to transition away from like how you're doing it, why do you do this? Why? why? Oh my God, great question. Okay. <laughs> I started in this industry as a talent manager. Okay. So, um, and it was through my business partner currently. Um, she and I, she was the last, she's one of the last actresses that I signed to work with. And um, with us working together, it just gelled. It was, you know, it was like, we were so like motivated when we worked together and it was like, we would work constantly, you know? And she came to me with all these ideas, creative ideas, you know, of different content. I went, this is amazing. You know, we got, we got to do something with this with no, I had no production experience at all at the time, you know, and I didn't have any intention to be um, in that world. I was in like the rep world. That's where I, I kind of found my niche. And um, so we ended up the first thing out of the gate. I said, what do you want to do? And she said, I want to do a Western. And I was like, okay. And I, you know, not knowing what that meant, right? Not knowing the detail and the work that goes right. into that. So my my big project is a western. So oh, I, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a TV series, like a killer TV series that I just cannot wait to get out there. And it's a western too. So they're they're fun. They are so much fun. And I learned that you know being on the set and I had zero your, oh, interest in westerns before I wrote this one. Oh, interesting. So, so where did you pull the the inspiration for that? Well, mine is. Um, the, well, the elevator pitch is it's uh, about two hardened bank robbing brothers in the Wild West who set out on a path of revenge against a figure from their past when a seemingly chance encounter with a group of time travelers endangers their or unravels their future. Well, look at that. Like word for all. Oh, oh, you're impressive. That's cool. I so, like this. <laughs> you got it. Like, word for I had this it. one scene in mind. Yeah. Like, you know, what if someone in the Wild West, like, ran into, like, a time traveler with a time machine? And then it, like, originally turned into a short. And nice. then, you know, the three rules of low-budget filmmaking. Don't have kids. Yes. Don't have animals. Yep. Don't have stunts. And yeah. I had all three. Oh, perfect. And yeah. so... You're not alone. Um, we've done the same thing. And then we're going, oh, God, why? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. So we, we, get it now. we were trying to put a budget together because I was thinking, oh, we could maybe do this for 20 to 30. Maybe I could raise money for right. that if it's cool enough. And then we stopped counting at 50 because that's the SAG low budget uh, or SAG short film budget cap. Yeah. And we figured it probably would have been around like... 80, 85 oh, wow. to really do it. Yeah. So I was like, and, and I had no no intention of making it a feature. And so I, I just turned to everyone at the, the meeting, my DP and the line producer and, and um, another producer and said, should I make this a feature? And they're like, yeah. So I spent six months outlining, filling in plot holes, yeah. going, okay, and now I need to like, you know, like, give backstories to the time travelers who are just going to be like just there. Yeah. Now I need to create like, why are they there? And you know, it, you built the world, you know? So yep. yeah, I had to world build. And yeah. then, you know, just, you know, after six months of developing, I finally started writing. It took me another six months to write the first draft. And then, you know, I kind of been polishing it and whittling it. Nice. Since, oh, that's awesome. But, Congratulations. Yeah. That's, that's not, you know, you, you went from start to finish and you followed through and that's, that's impressive. That's, it takes a lot takes a lot, a lot of, yeah you know and especially when you're dealing with time travel and you're dealing with potential oh know, there's so many holes in that you know even when so you, you're like many holes and but you know time and then is like relative and, giving trying to give misdirection while also trying to give foreshadowing yes of, you know there there's like so many layers and but at, deep down it it became a script that is so much more than what I ever anticipated because it's a story yeah. about nature versus nurture. Oh, it's a story nice. about destiny. Are you always destined to become, you know, and, and some of these questions we don't even really touch into in until like it, it's a fully self-contained story, but I've also got ideas for a sequel. 
Oh, nice. And so we dive into that even deeper oh, in that story. Cool. So, cool. I, which I only have like the first act, you know, outlined for that one, but I already know kind of where it's but going. You're already going. You're already working I'm, on it. That's I'm already awesome. working on it. I'm like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just trusting that I'll get to make the first one. Hey, and that'll be successful enough I get to make the second. Absolutely. You never know. You know, you could go 10 years without anything happening and then something clicks, you know, or it could be tomorrow. So tell me a little bit about your Western series. Oh, you know what? I didn't even answer your question, actually, in terms oh. of you said, how did I become a filmmaker? I'm like, oh, wait, wait, wait. It was why do you or do why, it? Why, yeah. why do I do this? Um, so after we did that, the West, speaking of Westerns, after we did that Western, um, it it was like intense work and I think I slept five hours like over the course of three or four days at one point and going through all of that and we had god we must have had like 20 to 30 extras we had a cast of over 10 you know main characters and then an entire crew and we were all out in this desert you know shooting this whole thing in this western town and it wasn't until we left and they put some of the footage up on the screen we rented this big huge trailer you know so we were driving it back and um and it wasn't until I saw the footage on that screen and I went, oh, my God. Like, I had that feeling, that, that kind of reward of, you know, starting from an idea and then going through everything. Because at that point, for six weeks, it was just me and my business partner. We put the whole thing together and then we started adding everybody on at the end. But, it, you know, when you take that much time that's, com like, committed religiously to this thing and it's so, it's not... You know, it's not rocket science. We're not curing cancer with this job, but it's it's very work intensive and the hours are incredibly long. And when you're doing it yourself, you're doing you're wearing all the hats at, at first. So the reward at the end of that to see this beautiful footage, it just it hit something emotionally. It just tapped something in there where I went, oh, I love this. I want to do this. This is where I want to be. You know, so there's something magical about that. I don't know how else to explain it, but that's that's the feeling. I, you know? I that's why I kind of one of the reasons I create, too. You know, yeah. and it's I, I I feel like I've got a, you know, kind of a bigger mission, mm -hmm. you know, um, especially being here in L.A. in Hollywood. But yeah. um, on on the fundamental level of creating, yeah, you know, it's the the seeing people interact and experience and appreciate what you put sometimes too much effort into right <laughs> i don't know if you're a perfectionist like me a little bit yeah. yeah um you know there's there's times where i'm like oh god i gotta check in with my family like i'm so focused on you know everything i'm doing and i'm working ridiculous hours and it's just you're just oh god wait life exists outside of this thing you know i think we sometimes we get caught up in that because it is so there's a little bit of addictiveness about it you know i don't know what it is maybe it's the artistic side of it or you know yeah, there, I, there's always, uh, you know, because I've done a lot of um, vlogging, and my vlogs are cinematic in nature. Nice. And so, you know, it's it's like I'm doing a three-act structure of whatever activity I'm doing. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I put music into it. I put a lot of editing into nice. it, you know, a lot of time. And it's always like that that thrill, like when I hit that publish button on YouTube. Which I need to get back to. I haven't consistently posted in like four years oh, wow. since even before lockdown. Oh my gosh. But and it's like I, I realized the other day, I'm like, hmm, it's been three and a half years since my last video. And even that was six months since I posted regularly. Not consistently. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. always my challenge. Yeah. Was getting stuff out on a consistent, regular schedule. Yeah. But I always love just putting videos out, seeing, you know, people react to it. And then, you know, just being able to share you know, something that, you know, I really, because when you put, create something, you're putting a piece of yourself into yes. that, especially if it's something that you're not just there for a paycheck. Totally. It's yeah. something mm -hmm. you care about, at least on a certain level. Yeah. You know, it might not be your dream project, but something that you, you really want to make sure it's, it's nice. You just got to be careful that you don't spend so much time that it never sees the light of day. So yeah. It's finding the balance because they, I mean, in, in a certain respect, they are your babies, you yes. know? You're like birthing this baby. I think you're going from like the conception idea to, you know, the full delivery of the project. And and, and you care because you're there from inception and it's, yeah. you know, and it's art. So it's a part of, you know, in, in something in here, you know. So that's yeah. what I think emotionally we're tapping into. And that's why it's, so you're, you're, it's a way for us to connect, too, with art. You know, you're sharing a piece of art that you, that was only up here and no one could really right. see. And, you know, you're bringing a visual to that. So I guess to, to kind of wind things down, let's speak specifically to uh, some newer filmmakers out there 
that are just really like getting their their teeth into this what's the biggest piece of advice that you would have for them oh um the word that really i have learned to absolutely love and stick to is perseverance because it, this business is a roller coaster you know one minute you're on high and the next you're going oh god this is horrible what am i doing i don't know if i'm ever going to get anything done if you can ride that wave mm -hmm. And at the end of that down point, when you pick yourself up, if you still want to do this, then keep doing it. Because it, you know, whether it happens tomorrow, like we were saying earlier, or it happens 10 years from now, you know, which is obviously no one wants to wait 10 years to get things made. But if you really love it that much, don't give up. Seriously, do not, because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And I think that's some of the magic of our business is that it changes every day. You know, it's not, I've worked a nine to five. So, I mean, it's, you go in, you, you have that job security, you know exactly what to expect every single day. Whereas with what we're doing, it's, it, you know, you're on set or you're at meetings or you're not doing anything or you're, you know, so it, it's constantly different. So, um, and it feels like at those down points, you know, that, oh, it's never going to happen. It will happen. You know, you just, you can't give up. So that, that would be the best thing that I could say you know, to the younger filmmakers is I hope they stick to it and I hope they never give up, you know, and I hope they reach out for resources and some people will help you and some will You're won't. talking like mental health No, no, no. I mean like you... resources within the industry oh, to in the help industry. get their, I mean, we all need that too, you know. Right. That's super important because if, you know, it's like the foundation of a house, you know, if the yeah. foundation is cracked then the house is going to fall. It doesn't matter how beautiful the house is, you know, so that's first is, is, and I had to learn the self care yeah. too. Cause, and if they can do that, you know, make sure you prioritize your mental health, your physical health, yeah. because it's going to sustain Especially you after the last couple of years. Absolutely. I mean, we've all kind of been through it in different ways, but if you can, you know, keep that foundation healthy as, as much as possible with everything everybody's dealing with and persevere through that, you know, and ask for help, reach out, yeah. you know, I mean, what's the worst everybody's going to say? No. Yeah. I, I think you, you hit on something interesting that a lot of people don't talk about is, I mean, we all know that this is a collaborative industry, mm -hmm. but you all usually think about that just on set, but it's beyond that. Yeah. It, it's your, your creative team and, you know, there's very few people that can do everything or at least do them well. Absolutely. Like I, I can edit, but I know I'm not an editor. Right, right. And in fact, I shot a short in, I think, June of 2020, mm -hmm. you know, cause it was the same thing. We're like, it's the middle of the pandemic. Everyone's available. No one's doing anything. Let's shoot. Exactly, and we shot yeah. something Brilliant. and it got held up in, in editing <sighs> because I was doing the editing and I would start hitting walls and I tried bringing in the, the producers and and going, I need some feedback, yeah. you know, because I'm like, I knew I needed to not be the only voice, but then we weren't getting together. And so it just stalled. Yeah. And so I still want to get it out, but I'm like, now it's on my shoulders completely. And I'm like, yeah, I still feel like I need that, that help. And, yeah, we and, do. We do. It's, yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot to take on, you know, especially if you're trying to juggle different things and most independent filmmakers, you know, this isn't your totally dedicated full-time paying job, you know, you're right. trying you know, because it just sometimes it doesn't work out that way. So you're juggling all these different things with other jobs and this and, and it's hard to maintain, you know. Yeah. So I totally understand where you're at with that. And then but if you can, you know, if they if the younger filmmakers, if find people that you really like working with, that yeah. you trust and build that team, you yeah. know, and that's 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 another thing, you know, well, which is not always perfect, doesn't always work out, you know. But if if you can kind of, like I said, just keep persevering, keep keep going. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, and I just I can't help but think, you know, everyone like looks at like an icon like Walt Disney and they forget that he had his brother Roy. You know, and if Roy wasn't there, Walt never right. would have done anything. Right. Because Roy, you know, uh, you know, for those that don't know, Roy Disney is Walt's brother and was really the, the business behind mm -hmm. Walt and you know, was the one that went to, I think it was Bank of America, and said, we need this money for Snow White. And they're like, you're going to make a feature animated film? You're insane. Right. And he said, yeah, we're insane, but we're doing it anyway, and exactly. we need this money. Yep. And, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. Because that's really what put 
the company on the map. Absolutely, yeah. But Walt couldn't do it on his own. And if he had to focus on that, he couldn't focus on the creative. Exactly. And that's why I do think, you know, I say this is a former manager, but only in the best way possible for the artist is that it's not about, you know, getting... If you don't want reps, that's fine. But it's it's more of if you are a creative, if you are an artist and that's where you thrive, find somebody that you trust that can handle the business side. It can be the business mind for you and deal with the networking and the and, and all of the, the you know, time the, you know, time wasting, some people would say, with a lot of talking, talking to different people, trying to get those inroads. And that takes a lot of energy away from being an artist, you know. So if you can find that pair or that that person that you trust to kind of ride with you through that then you're kind yeah. of balancing the scales so you know it helps definitely because we can't do it by ourselves there's no way you know absolutely not yeah we try we try we totally and, and, try and, yes and i should say a caveat is if you've got something you're trying to do don't let the fact that you don't have anyone else in your corner oh, stop yeah. you from it oh totally don't push what you can do what you can when you can yep. but don't only try and do it on your own yeah so. Different different options. I try everything, you know, and something's gonna sink in, you know, something's gonna work. It's you know, yeah. I agree with you totally. Well, this has been a great conversation. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was fun. This was absolutely. Fun. This was a, a lot of fun. I want to thank you for being a VFF alumni, and hopefully we will see you again at this year's festival. Oh, I would love it. Thank you so much.